There's a common phrase over the years that goes something like, this is my Bible, it is the word of God. I am what it says I am, I can do what it says I can do. Hello and welcome to live series. My name is Brian Mwashigadi. Today we head on over to the book of Matthew chapter 22 and I'm going to be reading verse 29. Matthew 22 verse 29, I'm reading the New King James Version and the Bible says, Jesus answered and said to them, you are mistaken not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God or you are mistaken because you do not know the scriptures nor the power of God. This is an interesting time and just a little backstory to what is happening. By the time that we are where we are, where we've just read right now, the Sadducees have come um, to ridicule the idea of resurrection, all right? Uh, in the day of Jesus, he's not yet been crucified uh, at this point. He's still doing his ministry. So the Sadducees uh, have come to ridicule the idea of resurrection. And uh, as, they, as they come to, 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 to Jesus at this point, um, they are saying to him, especially in the idea of marriage, they are talking about in the day of Moses that if a man dies having no children, that the brother is supposed to marry his wife and raise up the offspring for his brother. So um, they are trying to trap Jesus. They are saying, so if you have seven brothers and then after you die, um, you have no children, the other brother comes and marries you and then that one that brother dies and then somebody else and somebody else and so on and so forth that's the idea and so the question is uh lastly the woman dies also so the question they're asking they're trying remember they're trying to um ridicule the idea of resurrection so they're saying in the resurrection whose wife of the seven will she be um, because all of them had her while they were here on earth. So that's a question that the Sadducees ask to try and trap Jesus or to try and just cancel out the idea um, of the resurrection. Then Jesus answered, answers them in these words and he says to them, you are mistaken uh, because you do not know the scriptures nor the power of God. You see, ideally, the Sadducees back in the day, just like the Pharisees, um, those teachers of the law and so on and so forth, were people who knew the scriptures ideally they knew the word they knew the law of Moses even by heart so they were people who um, were, no, were known to be knowledgeable okay and so when scripture actually says right here uh, Jesus responds to them and says to them you are in error because or you're mistaken because you do not know the scriptures and you do not know the power of God it it causes you to pause and think for a moment it causes you to wonder what is Jesus talking about because these are people who should be knowing the scriptures but then here's an interesting thought that you could find uh, in the words of Jesus that it is possible for somebody to have much Bible knowledge yet fundamentally not know the scriptures it is possible just to draw um, uh, another um, similarity to these words of Jesus Paul in the book of um, 2nd Timothy chapter 1 and 13 says to Timothy hold fast to the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me this suggests that biblical truth has a pattern to it. It has a pattern that can be detected by a designing heart. It has a pattern that can be mapped out by somebody who knows, understands, and lives out the scriptures, okay? Not just somebody who knows it for the sake of it or for the prestige of saying that I know the Bible, I've read it cover to cover, and so on and so forth. So if, I, I, if, if we think that way then, then what Jesus is saying that it is possible for you to to have a lot of Bible knowledge, yet you don't really know uh, the scriptures. As you're thinking about the topic um, of who you are in Christ, as you're thinking about your identity, as you're thinking about what God says about you, then I think for you to settle your identity, you not only need to just know a lot about the scriptures, you must know the scriptures. Not just know them by heart like or in your mind by mem in, uh, um, to memorize them, not really that, that is good, that is great, but also to know them truly by heart, that you believe it. Back to the phrase that we started by saying, when you read your Bible, you tell yourself, this is my Bible and it is the word of God. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. What does God say about you? I think I'd like to throw you right back to scripture. As you read your Bible, the Bible is laden with truths about what God says about you. We find our identity right in there. We say we find our identity in Christ and our identity in Christ then we can find it extended or the amplified version of it is that we go into scripture right from the beginning. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 when God is commissioning the man says to him be fruitful. 
multiply, subdue, have dominion over every single living creature. The Lord is saying to man, this is what you shall be. And be is a verb. V be is a doing word. It's a verb. Okay. And so who you are, who you, you are every day is determined by the words of God, determined by the word of God. And so if you're not reading your Bible, it's easy for you to find yourself in a web of darkness, confused because you really don't know who you're supposed to be. You are trying to catch this and to catch this. And so long as you're not reading or getting your identity from the Bible, you're clutching at straws. It, it's not going to help. So here's my words of advice or recommendation or my challenge to you. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Not only read it to know it, read it to internalize it by heart. Read it and believe every single word. Even if it might not look like it, if God says it, then you believe it. Because he shall do every single thing that he said. If God says in his word that you are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, God's holy nation, that you may tell the works of him who has called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light, believe it and act like it. If God says that he has made us a kingdom of priests, of kings and priests unto God, believe it, act like it. The Bible says, one of my favorite portions in Colossians 3 and 1, therefore, if you're serious about living this new resurrection life in Christ, act like it. You cannot act like it if you don't know it in the first place. How do you know it? You know it by reading your Bible. So what does God say about you? It's all written in there in the Bible. Open yourself up to the instruction of his word, to the washing of the water of the word. Give yourself over to him. Let him speak to you. Let him instruct you. Let him guide you. Don't go to bed without reading the word. Don't go a whole day without reading the word. Don't get out of the house without reading the word in the morning because that is where you find what God says or who God says you are. What does God say about you? It's written right in there. So our confession from today is that this is my Bible. It is the word of God. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. My name is Brian Mashigati. I pray that you will stay in the identity of Jesus today and forever. Amen.